When I start infinite banking, should I pay back the loan or the interest? My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And we are the founders of Wealth Nation. So the Wealth Nation channel is geared towards helping go-getters and entrepreneurs own their own lifestyle through the infinite banking concept. And today's topic is all about loan structure and how you pay it back. Mm -hmm. Because this was something that Darius and I were challenged with when we first started our journey, because we were trying to figure out how do we pay back the loan? When do we pay back the loan? Mm -hmm. what, what about the interest? Mm -hmm. So uh, we just wanna make sure that we share this information with you so that you don't have as many issues as we had when we first started our journey. Um, so in this video, we're actually going to share with you two different scenarios on how we believe it makes sense for you, you to pay back your loan, mm -hmm. just to give you a little bit more education and clarity when it comes to this specific topic. Exactly. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every single time we come out with brand new videos, just like this one you're watching today. Yep. Now, let me be crystal clear. When you borrow from the, when you get a loan from the, your insurance policy, it's not a matter of if you should pay back the loan, it's a matter of when. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Because let's think about it. When you borrow money from the bank, which is who we're copying in this scenario, when you borrow money from the bank, they're expecting their money back to principal and interest. Oh yeah. Now, when you become your own source of financing, you're gonna treat yourself exactly the same way you would a bank. Yep. So when would you like your money? Yesterday. Right, you want it back <laughs> in a, a timely, predictable manner. So the difference we have here is the when, the frequency, because you can control when these loans are paid back. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you have complete control over your financial future. Exactly. As opposed to going to the bank where there is absolutely no control. Exactly. They want their money back yesterday mm -hmm. and every single month after that without question. Right. So the beauty about infinite banking is the fact that you have that flexibility and it's allowed Darius and I to finance so many different things within our lifestyle. So just so that you know, we have used our policies for paying off third party debt. We've used it to fund our business. Mm -hmm. We've used it for travel. We've used it for other lifestyle expenses. And it's it's been amazing because we are in control of when we pay back these loans to our banking system mm -hmm. and we actually haven't paid back any of our loans yet to our banking system because we are focused on paying off all of our third-party debt first mm -hmm. and once that is taken care of then we'll work on paying all the loans back right. so going into the scenarios that we were talking about earlier I'm actually going to flip over to our computer screen so that you can see what we mean as far as how to pay back the loans and when to pay back the loans and when it makes sense mm -hmm. Now the thing to keep in mind is everyone's scenario is different. Absolutely. So these are two just generic scenarios that we hope will provide a little bit more clarity to you. Mm -hmm. But just think about what you want to do specifically and how these loans are gonna fit your current lifestyle. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so as promised, we are going to go through two scenarios today. So the very first scenario is where someone is going to pay back the loan within one year. And the reason why they want to pay the loan back in one year is because they want to pay the loan off as soon as possible. And the second scenario I'm going to show you is where someone pays back the loan within two years. And the reason why they do this is because they want a little bit of breathing room when it comes to those minimum payments. It's definitely a lot less and they prefer to have a little bit of liquidity. So I'm going to run through these differences so you can see which one you would prefer. All right, so let's begin with scenario one. Scenario one, we're gonna use Jim as an example. So we wanna say that Jim is going to pay back his policy loan within one year. So Jim requested a $10,000 loan from the insurance company because he had $10,000 of cash value available. So the insurance company just collateralized his policy so that he can obtain a loan from the insurance company. Now, when Jim gets this loan, he has to determine what his repayment schedule is gonna be. And these days it's super easy to figure that out because you can just uh, look in Google and look for an amortization schedule or an amortization calculator and it'll do all of the work for you. 
So Jim determined that if, with his $10,000 loan, he was going to charge himself 10% amortize, and he was going to pay it back within 12 months. Now with this $10,000, Jim is actually going to take his entire family on a cruise. But for you, it may be different. You can use this $10,000 for whatever you choose. Just for this example, we're going to talk about Jim taking his family on vacation. And once Jim returns from vacation, all of the terms are spelled out here so he knows exactly how he's going to be making these policy loans back to the insurance company. So the monthly payment that he figured through his amortization calculator is $879 that he's going to be paying on a monthly basis. And once he pays that for 12 months straight, he's going to pay $10,550. So basically the amount of interest that he would have paid back to himself is an additional $550. And he's going to pay it off by December. So basically a year from now. So now let me show you the motion of money and how this is going to take place. On your screen, you'll notice there are three pictures. So the first one is the insurance company followed by the checkings account, which is Jim's checking account, and then the vacation, that cruise that he's taking his family on. So how this is all going to work out, first and foremost, Jim is going to request the loan from the insurance company. So the insurance company direct deposits $10,000 into Jim's checking account. Now, Jim is going to go pay for his vacation, and he is going to take his family on that vacation. Once everyone has returned back from vacation, now reality sets in, and Jim has to pay this loan back. So do you remember what he was going to pay as far as a monthly payment is concerned? It's $879. This was the amount of money that he figured on his amortization calculator that he could afford to pay back on a monthly basis. So every single month he is paying the insurance company $879. Now, how can this take place? Either one of two things. Jim can write a check and send it to the insurance company, or he can create a payment arrangement with the insurance company where they will withdraw $879 out of his check checkings account on a monthly basis on the date that he requests. Now remember, with this first scenario, Jim wants to get rid of this loan. He wants to pay it back as soon as possible. So he is being super aggressive. So he is going to make 12 payments of $879, and that equals $10,550. So basically, Jim has paid a little bit over the principal because he has charged himself 10% interest. Now, how does that work itself out? $10,000 is going to go towards the principal and pay the insurance company back, and the additional $550 is going to go towards additional paid-up additions. And this goes directly into Jim's policy, which allows him to have more cash value that he can utilize next year. Any additional money that is added on top of the premium, as far as Jim's policy is concerned, goes directly to cash value. So that $550 is now earning that guaranteed 4% as well. So as you can see, this is a very simple transaction. These days, instead of using the insurance company, maybe we would have utilized a credit card to pay per, for vacation, and we would have paid that credit card back every single month, principal and interest. Now, in this case, all we're doing is utilizing the insurance company instead of a bank or another financial institution so that we can keep all of this money circulating within our system. Because as soon as Jim pays all of that money back, he has it available again to utilize. Now check out the amortization schedule that I have here for you. Again, the calculator that I found on Google did this all for me. So this printed out the amortization schedule, which is really nice to see because you typically get this from your bank. And check out the interest column. Where does that money typically go to? All of that interest usually goes to that credit card you put money on or towards the financial institutions. In this case, all of this interest goes towards Jim's policy or your policy, for example, to increase the cash value. So I hope this was a simple rundown of scenario one. Basically, what I was showing you is how you obtain a loan from the policy and you pay it all back plus interest in one year and how the principal goes back to the insurance company and the interest goes into your policy in the form of additional paid up additions. All right, so now let's go to scenario two.
Now remember scenario two is for the individual who appreciates liquidity. And what I mean by liquidity is instead of paying all of the money back to the insurance company immediately, they wanna hold on to some of that money in case an emergency comes up, they have access to it and they don't have to wait the few days for processing in order for the loan to be deposited. Now with scenario two, we're gonna utilize the same numbers. And in this case, we're just gonna use a different individual. So we're gonna say Mary has a loan for $10,000 now in this case. And Mary decided that she wanted to pay her loan back within two years. So what that changes for her is that it's the same payment terms as far as it being 10% interest, but she just has 24 months to pay the loan back. And what the loan summary looks like in this situation is instead of that monthly payment being $879, in this case, it's almost cut in half. So she's just going to pay $461. However, over the course of the 24 months, she is actually going to pay back $11,075 in total because the interest that she's paying is $1,075. Now, one thing I wanna point out, when people think about loan payments and minimum payments and all of that is concerned, a lot of people typically just look at the monthly payment. So in this case, Mary is going, oh, this is a lot more comfortable for me monthly. However, she may not realize that she is paying double in interest because she's paying the loan for a longer period of time. One thing people don't realize is it's not about the interest rate, it's about the volume of interest. I mean the terms, how long are you actually paying that loan because that's going to affect how much interest you're paying. So if you're paying over a longer period of time, that means that is much more interest that is being paid out to the financial institutions. However, luckily in Mary's case, all of this interest is going to be going back to herself because she's doing infinite banking. Now let me show you what the motion of money looks like in this situation because Mary is actually doing the exact same thing. She's taking her family on a cruise. However, she wants two years time to be able to pay this vacation back. So in this case, when we look at the motion of money, we have three icons on the screen again. We have the insurance company, her checkings account, and then the last icon is different. In this case, it's called your segregated account or your savings account. What we actually do within uh, how we structure our loans is we have opened up a separate checkings account at our banking institution where we can make all of our loan repayments into this account so that none of that money is commingled amongst our expense account. It's off to the side. We also like doing this just for tracking purposes. It keeps everything nice and neat so we don't have to worry about it. So let's go ahead and go through this process. Mary is going to request a loan from the insurance company, and in this case, it's $10,000. So once that money is deposited into Mary's checking account, she is then going to go take that $10,000 and pay for her family vacation. Once the vacation is paid for and they went on their vacation, had the time of their lives, now it's time to get real and start paying those loans back. So instead, with scenario two, the difference is instead of Mary paying the insurance company directly every single month, she has that money in her savings account because she prefers liquidity. And the reason why she likes liquidity is because maybe she wants to utilize that money and keep moving it. So in this case, Mary may have student loans that she wants to pay off. She may have some other expenses that she wants to pay with this money and pay herself back that principal plus interest. So instead of paying the insurance company back, Mary is going to make those monthly payments, which is $461, into a separate account at her bank. She is going to pay $461 for six months. And after six months, you notice she has $2,766 in her bank account. Now, after 12 months of her paying herself, $461, she has $5,532 in her savings account, which is liquid cash that she can utilize. Now, after 12 months, what happens is the insurance company sends you a notice in the mail. And that notice is one, your insurance policy statement, but two, they're also going to send you a bill in the mail 
for a 5% simple interest fee because you have not paid back the loan. So in this case, 5% simple interest of $10,000 is $500. So the insurance company just asks that you pay your premium for that year and then also send another check for $500, which is that simple interest fee. So what Mary is going to do is where she's going to get this money to pay her simple interest. Well, she can get it from her savings, that segregated account if she wanted to, because obviously there's $500 available there if she has $55.32 in her savings account. So what Mary's going to do is she's going to cut a check to the insurance company from that savings account, and she's going to pay them the 5% simple interest fee plus the premium, which she's paying out of pocket for that. She's paying that through her income. So now that the insurance company has paid off for the year, Mary is going to continue to make her payments of $461 to herself. Since she's withdrawn $500 from this savings account, she now has $5,032 available. So she's going to continue to pay herself because she has one more year left of these payments. Now in this case, let's say something comes up and the carburetor goes out in Mary's car. She has money available in her savings to be able to pay for that instantly. Or if something happens to one of her children, she's able to pay for any injury or anything that comes up when it comes to her kids. Now, Mary likes this instance because again, this money is just sitting in her savings account and she can utilize this money. But if she was to use that $5,000, Mary does have to create another payment schedule to make sure that she pays this money back. In this case, you can look at that segregated account as almost a credit card, like your personal credit card, because anytime you use money out of here, you need to make sure that you replenish it plus interest. This is where banking comes into play because you are now your own source of financing. Anytime you need money, you borrow it from yourself and you pay it back plus interest. So let's keep going. 18 months later, we have $7,798 in her savings account because this is that minimum payment that she's paying back to herself, which is $461. Now, after 24 months, Mary has $10,564 available. And in this case, she can absolutely pay the loan back to the insurance company so she can write a check for $10,000, or she can pay all of that back, again, taking 100% of the principal towards the insurance company and the rest, that $564 can go towards additional paid up additions. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure that you all are tracking with me because Mary went on vacation. She took her whole family on a cruise and just two years later, she has all of that money back plus interest in her possession. How powerful is that? Because how many vacations have you gone on and received anything back from them? Before infinite banking, I would say absolutely not. I didn't make any money from vacations. But now understanding this concept, we make money from going on our vacations. So in this case, Mary has earned a 10% return by taking her family on vacation. And this 10% is outside of the policy. Remember, the policy is already growing at a guaranteed 4% interest rate. So she just made an additional 10% by going on vacation. Did Mary take any risks? No. Did she have to work any harder? No. All she's doing is recapturing the money that she would have already spent. And that's what we wanna get you all to understand is that you are your biggest customer. Think of all of the money that is currently leaving you right now. What if you were able to get all of that money back plus interest? Would that change things for you? I absolutely think it would. So in this case, a lot of times people are thinking about what investments can they do or where can they park their money? All you have to do is look inside your checkbook. What expenses can you currently recapture within your household and get all of that money back? Try starting there. 
Now, the thing to keep in mind when you do this scenario for people who prefer liquidity, if you have the money outside of the insurance company, you need to make sure that you're keeping that money in the segregated account in motion, meaning you're using it and you're paying yourself back plus interest. And the reason why this is so important is because if you're going to have to pay the insurance company 5% simple interest, we need to make sure that whatever money outside of the policy that you have is working and it's making you more money than it costs you to hold on to the money, which in this case was the $500. Now here's the amortization schedule. Again, same thing, I went on Google and typed in all of my information and it gave me an amortization schedule. So in this case, again, just to reiterate, all of the interest would have been going towards a third party financial institution. But in this case, Mary was able to keep all of that money for herself and she was able to utilize it because remember she pulled $500 from her banking system to pay the 5% simple interest fee that she paid the insurance company. So this was amazing because not only was she able to pay the loan back, but she also has some more money for herself as cushion. So these are things that we just want you to be able to keep in mind. But again, remember if you're gonna leave your money out in the segregated account, we really expect that you use that money to make more money so that you're making more and more interest and it's not just sitting there. If your money is just going to be sitting there and you're not doing anything with it, then we definitely recommend paying the loan back immediately so that you're not charged that 5% simple interest fee. Hopefully you got some clarity from what Carmen shared with us today and that you saw that every situation is different. What works for us may not necessarily work for you because you have different uh, goals and dreams and aspirations for your financial future than we do. Yeah. So one thing I want you to really remember, I, I get this from Spider-Man, is with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're able to control your own economy or control your own uh, source of financing, you have a lot of power and responsibility, not just for now, but for the next generation to come. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the frequency in which you pay yourself back and repay those loans, because all that okay. should be coming up into your, your thinking as you uh, move forward with the, your financing. And I, that's such a great point. I'm glad that you said that because it's so easy to fall off of that discipline scale of actually paying yourself back. Right. And so we want to make sure that we stress that you're always going to pay yourself back. You're always going to pay back those loans. How you do it may be different from person to person, but it's all, on to, all up to you to make sure that you make it happen. And the other thing to keep in mind is this may be a little bit overwhelming at first for you, but just take a, a deep breath because all you need is a good calculator because <laughs> the calculator is going to determine your amortization schedule, how you make those payments back, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're one of our clients, we actually do a lot of the heavy lifting for you mm -hmm. because we create something called a GPS where it's your financial roadmap. So we say exactly what you're going to be doing with the policy loan mm -hmm. based off of the financial goals that we've discussed. And we show you every single month how you should be moving money and paying yourself back. Mm -hmm. So those are just different things that you need to keep in mind as you go through this journey. We hope this information was very valuable for you and answer the question on should I pay back the loan or not? Mm -hmm. It's a matter of when. Yes. So make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at wealthnation.io. And for more information, go to our website, wealthnation.io. Mm -hmm. And remember, everyone, own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will. Thank you.